Not many people got a code to live by anymore. Passion for film um, started where I think most Lexingtonians passion for film starts and that's at the Kentucky Theater. Um, when it was revitalized after the fire, um, it was a very formative time for me. I was 15 years old and I just started going to every screening, sometimes, I mean, two, three times a day. That's really where my love for cinema was born. My relationship with Harry Dean Stanton also began at the Kentucky Theater. Um, when I was 15 years old, I saw Repo Man there. And I remember watching the movie and just being enamored with this person, thinking he was just like the most fascinating screen presence I'd ever witnessed. And I walked out of the theater and I said, my God, who was that? What was that? What just happened? And somebody said, oh, that's actually Mary's uncle. And our friend Mary Lake, as it turned out, they were related. And they said, yeah, he's from around here someplace. And I was blown away by that fact. Like, I loved the fact that I watched the movie, that I fell in love with this person on the screen. And then as I walked out, I found out that we were actually from the same place and that he probably spent time in that very movie theater where I first saw him. Years passed, um, I, I was a big James Dean fan when I was a kid and I used to go to Fairmont, Indiana, which is the home of James Dean. And there's a festival for him, a three-day festival uh, every year, and they show his three films. And then when I moved back to Lexington, um, some friends were working on the Lexington Film League. They'd started it. They were doing an amazing job with it. They asked if I wanted to be involved. They said, what would you like to bring to it? And it just kind of popped out of my mouth. Um, maybe we could have a Harry Dean Stanton festival. I mean, James Dean has one and he has three movies. Harry Dean has like 200 movies. It'll program itself forever. When I had the idea, I, I recognized that I needed to probably reach out to him and make sure that this was okay, that he would in fact approve of the festival in his honor. Um, and I asked around, you know, does anybody know him? Does anybody have a connection to him? How can I get in touch with him? And um, a very close friend of mine said, you know, what about Tom Thurman? Tom Thurman knows everybody. Uh, and Tom Thurman uh, is an amazing, brilliant documentary filmmaker who lives here in Lexington. And uh, so I just cold called poor Tom Thurman, who had no idea who I am. Um, I call him out of the blue. And I said, hi, you know, I heard that there was a possibility you might know Harry Dean. And he said, I might know Harry Dean. And I said, yeah, it's a, I'm sorry, is that not a thing? And he said, I might know Harry Dean. And I said, yes. And he said, I've actually been working on a documentary about Harry Dean for 20 years, and we're about to premiere it at the Kentucky, or at the Kentucky Theater. And I thought, I mean, at first, I didn't know if he thought I was kidding. I didn't know if he was kidding. But like, sure enough, he really had made this brilliant documentary um, about Harry and was going to premiere it. And so I asked if maybe we could piggyback on that and start the festival. So our opening night screening was Tom Thurman's KET documentary, Harry Dean Stanton Crossing Mulholland. The festival has grown, and it's grown quickly. Um, and it's we're trying to keep it from growing too quickly and to sort of maintain sort of organic growth, um, not really project anything on it. Harry's very Eastern and Zen, and it feels like we should sort of make the festival sort of in line with that in his honor. Obviously the year that he came here was tremendous. We had people coming from all over the country, um, from the northwest as far as Seattle, from the northeast as far as Philadelphia, from the south as far as Miami, uh, and all of a sudden we really realized that this is a national entity. Um, so we've just kind of been letting it go where it goes. I mean we figured out that first year when everything fell into place that there was some sort of guiding force <laughs> behind all of it. Um, Harry's kind of a magical dude and so everything kind of just works out. This is our first theme year. Um, we're doing it all 1970s, all 1970s films, all 1970s music. Uh, and this is the first time we sort of explored that sort of idea. So if this works out, then, you know, next year we might have a 1980s festival. There's sort of already ideas percolating. We have been amazingly fortunate in that Palisades has been our house band since the second year of the festival. I had this idea in my head that I would love to have a soundtrack cover band so that we could have like a musical component so that it could be more of a social event. And I was sort of asking around town, you know, do people think this is a good idea? And a friend said, well, it's, it's a fine idea, but you'll never find a band that's willing to put that much work into it that also has the chops to do it and has, you know, that sort of community spirit. And I said, well, wait a minute, I think maybe I do. And I contacted Scott Whitten, and he was so on board for the idea, so enthusiastic. His involvement, the involvement of Palisades, John Ferguson, all of the guest musicians that they've brought in um, has just been an absolutely amazing thing and has added so much to the festival. Those folks work tirelessly. I mean, for months they're putting together these set lists, uh, and it always winds up being my favorite night of the festival.
My favorite moment. Um, I think I think my favorite moment, just the most gratifying moment, was in being in the car with Harry Dean Stanton on the way back to the airport. And he was after after he'd been here for a few days, and he was very very quiet. And I got very concerned. I was like, Oh my gosh, we have worn this poor man out. He is exhausted. He had a miserable time. Um, what have I done? And all of a sudden, he was just like, What was that thing that I said when I got on stage? And I said, what thing? And he said, he was like, that thing I said. He was like, did I say? And then he said an expletive. This is expletive terrifying. And I said, yes, Harry, I think you did. And he said, was that the right thing to say? And I was like, yeah, it was the perfect thing to say. It was hilarious. And I realized that while he was sitting there going through all of that in his mind, what I thought was him being exhausted was him just really replaying the entire weekend. And I think that, you know, as he gave me a big hug at the airport, um, I ultimately felt like we'd really done a service to him and that he had a really lasting, important memory of Kentucky. I don't know if he ever plans on coming back, but being able to have him standing up at the theater and Jim Gray giving him a key to the city and having that just thunderous applause from 800 people sitting out of the theater where he used to go when he went to UK. I think that was my favorite moment, was just knowing that hopefully it meant something to him. I really don't know what to say. Does anybody have any idea? <laughs> don't forget it. Etch it in your brain.